Three, two, one. This is Nick. And I'm Amanda. And this is the Performance Play Podcast, where we give you bite-sized bits of information based on nutrition and exercise science to improve your overall performance. On this episode, we're going to be talking about communication with your healthcare professionals and how you as a patient can best advocate for yourself. So to kick off the episode, we're both first, Nick, I was going to ask, you know, has there been have you had an experience before where maybe you felt misunderstood or um, not, not heard by your doctor or physical therapist? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of people have had incidences where they've had a bad experience where the person was kind of maybe in a rush, maybe they're having a bad day, whatever it may be. Um, I just remember in grad school at some point I got scabies and I never knew it, what scabies was, but oh, mm -hmm. it's disgusting. Anyway, I got it from, I believe it was the hospital I was at. It happens quite often in there. And I thought it was poison ivy. I went to the doctor. They looked at it real quick. They're like, oh, I think it's poison ivies. And lo and behold, did all these quarters of steroids, treated it for poison ivy. Nothing was working. Went back again. They were like, ah. I think it's fasciculitis. They weren't even looking at the rash any, at, at this point either. They just oh. did not look at the rash. And I was like, I don't know. I feel like it's not, it, something's not right. Like I've had poison ivy before. It's not getting better. I was like, do you want to see the rash? She's like, no, no, no. I think it's this. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I was, I didn't know. I'm like, wait, something's weird here. And then eventually I'm like, things are getting better. Now I got all these little bubbles on my hands too. I was like, what the heck is going on? This is weird. So weird. Clawing off my skin every night. And then eventually oh. I go to a dermatologist and they just sat down and listened to me like, Hey, where are we working? I was like, Oh, I'm in a, I'm a student. I'm in the hospital right now. Um, and they just looked at my hands and they're like, Oh dude, you have scabies. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah. I was like, what? They're like, what have you been taking? I was like, Oh, I was on corticosteroids. I was on this medicine for sciculitis. I was on this stuff for poison Ivy. That was really bad. And poison Oak. And oh. they're, like, they're like, nah, man, that's not going to do anything for you. Take these and you're fine. I'm like, what? I was like, all you had to do was look at the thing, the rash a little bit better, like ask a and, couple questions. Yeah, there, that was the thing. It was like there was no questions asked. They just were like, oh, like I have got this rash on my hip. Think mm -hmm. it's poison ivy. I'm not really sure. And they're like, oh, take this and come back, and take this yeah. and come back. Nothing was getting better. Was like, come on, man. <laughs> so that like frustrated. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that I would you? definitely be frustrated too. Um, mine definitely was birth control. I remember when I first started learning about the potential downsides of birth mm -hmm. control and I brought them up with my gynecologist and she was like, oh, well, you know, um, the, I think she said something along the lines of like the IUD is more localized. So it's not as, you know, it's not as taxing on the system as the, um, oral contraceptives, mm -hmm. but lo and behold that, you know, I still had issues on the IUD and then came yeah. back a year later decided to come off of it and had issues coming off of it that she disregarded and said oh no that's not you know due to the birth control etc mm -hmm. um and granted it was probably a combination of things but I felt like I had you know I had done my research I yeah. had um you know facts to back up what I was saying but it was kind of just disregarded and you know she kind of looked at me like oh no that's you know that's not true without even mm -hmm. really hearing out what I had to say about it or how I was feeling on it. Yeah. Um, you know, they kind of just pushed stain on it. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, it's not really what I want. And here's yes. why. <laughs> yeah. And I think I totally get what you're saying because it's mine wasn't that really that experience of like there is there yours was like an optional type thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you don't have yeah. to go that. Mine I was like, I need to fix scabies because that's one that has to get off me because I can't give it to patients and stuff. Um, right. But yours is that of like what you sit and that's kind of where we're going to go with this is the, it's not really what I want. Right. Type. Like, you know what I mean? It's a lot of it comes down to, mm -hmm. is it something you want? You know? Right. Is this what like you a lot of, want to do? Yeah. <laughs> like to understand patients and clients are always looking for help. Mm-hmm. And in order to help someone, you have to actively listen to them and understand yes. what their concerns are, their concerns, not your concerns, yeah. Yeah. but their concerns, their symptoms, their goals. Mm -hmm. And I think that just given, you know, like you said, sometimes there's just not enough time. Yeah. Um, and it's something that seems to be missed. And I've had 
you know, clients that have worked with me before that have had similar experiences. Mm -hmm. So today, you know, that's really why we want to talk about this. You know, how can you get more out of your doctor visits and, um, you know, or whatever, whatever it is, doctor, therapist, physical therapist, nutritionist, et cetera. How can you get more out of that and how can you use it to really advocate for yourself? Um, and you know, hopefully leave with a little bit more clarity and feel like you were being heard. Yes. And what that's what the main thing is like you want to leave an appointment with anybody. What honestly, anybody. It doesn't matter if it's a healthcare professional, if it's the guy that's making you a new bathroom. You know what I mean? You want to feel that appointment like, all right, they understood right. my goals, they understood what I wanted. Now we're gonna gel together and make this this team effort yeah. of wanting to work together and get to the end goal of what we want to be, whether it's right. like I said, and they were able to show me a path there. Yes. And a path that felt good to me. Yeah. And what, that's what we want is a, it's a path. We want you, when you go see anybody, like we said, not always healthcare. We're just, I'm in the healthcare field. Amanda deals with the healthcare field as well. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're in that field. So like, we're going to fo- focus on that, but like you go to buy a new car, you want, you don't want to have an right. uncomfortable experience. You're like, Hey, I need a, right. a car with four things, whatever it is. And they're trying to sell you a coupe, like four, they're trying to sell you a coupe, but you can't fit your kids in. It's like, well, what the heck is this going to do for me? You're not listening to what I want. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I think you that's know? where the inspiration for this podcast or this episode really came from because we were talking about communication yeah. and self-care and how it's such an important part of self-care because if we're not able to communicate our needs, mm-hmm. how is anyone ever going to know? Yes. And how, that's it. So and- <laughs> we, we really wanted to, you know, um, specify it to the healthcare setting because I think mm-hmm. this is just a really big issue yeah. um and yeah. when you know we, we were looking at some studies and some polls and uh things that were done and there was a medscape poll where they interviewed 2,000 patients about their relationships with their personal physicians mm-hmm. and they found that communication was one of the main driving factors um in patient loyalty so meaning that those patients stuck with that doctor yeah. or physician um in particular there was patients that said their pcp respects them mm-hmm. uh explains possible causes of illness and those who say that the staff and the staff are patient and helpful so yeah. um three things there right the listening mm-hmm. the education yep. and then also just being decent humans and treating people with kindness and respect yes, is really what's people. going yeah. to create a positive experience for someone yeah. because again if you are going to the doctor you know maybe it is just your regular checkup but a lot of times like the doctor's office can feel very overwhelming for some mm-hmm. people especially yeah. if they're nervous about certain health concerns or they have questions about things that they don't actually know how to voice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know that the gynecologist in particular can be very uncomfortable for some females. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's the same goes for men and, mm-hmm. you know, in men's health. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we, you know, well, one of the things that I will suggest to clients if they're going to meet with a doctor is actually writing down their questions, concerns, yes. and symptoms before they go yeah. so that it's much easier. And mm-hmm. if you really have trouble actually communi- communicating them and talking about them, you can even hand them that paper yes. and yep. they, you know, then they can address it that way. Yeah. So that's one of the best tools I, I personally think. Yeah. Um, that's also helped me in the past. I mean, I've even just written things on the note app of my phone. Yeah. I love that thing. It's a saving yes. grace. <laughs> and then I just refer to there so that I don't forget. Yeah. Well, we even, so in school, we talk a lot about this. Um, mm-hmm. And one of them was one, have you tell your patients like before they meet with their doctor, if they have questions about X, Y, and Z um, or tell your family members, write them down. Cause you will forget. Yeah. As soon as you get overwhelmed with how you feeling today, what's going on, you may forget. And it happens to me time and time again, I'll be, we'll be 55 minutes into the person's evaluation, almost done clearing things up. And then they'll drop like a golden nugget in regular conversation. Like we'll just be chatting about life and they'll be like, whatever it is like, oh, I haven't like walked downstairs normally in 10 years. They're like, whoa, what? I, I asked you before, like, what have you been doing stairs? And you're like, yeah, yeah. But to them, it wasn't, they've been doing it, but just not normally. Mm-hmm. And it's, so we have to really focus on that. Like you can write down your questions you want to ask your healthcare professional or anyone you're working with of these are things I want to address. The other one is you can always, if you have a family member or a friend that would want to come with you, one, it ta- it's someone to talk to. It also dissipates your nervousness of being there because someone's with you. And 
they can also listen because if you have two ears listening, you're each going to gather different points and then you're kind of kind of piece it together. Like you heard this, I heard this. Yeah. Um, so we want that is a huge factor of like making sure you're prepared for your appointment, making sure you're prepared for like what you want to get out of your appointment. So right. part of the studies we were reading too, besides the one of understanding and being a good human and all that was not just like your doctor should be educating you. Your healthcare professional should be educating you. Anybody should be educating you on what they're going to do, like why they're going to do it, what they're going to do or what the plan is. And right. And that was, that's a huge factor. Next, exactly. Yeah. And what I would suggest too, is actually asking for resources or explanations mm -hmm. rather than going home and web MDing everything. Mm. Yes. Ask the doctor for yeah. their resources. Check hey, why this. are we doing this? Can you explain this? It would help with my adherence if you could please explain this to me. Yes, um, it gets buy-in. And even, <laughs> right. <laughs> and even going back to um, writing things down, I can tell you right now, like that worked for me when mm -hmm. I went back. Yeah. I wrote down, hey, this is my cycle length. These are the symptoms I'm having. Um, mm -hmm. This is how I'm feeling. This is the overwhelm. Like, this is what I'm nervous about. And then she was much more receptive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you had, then a, you had a plan, right? Exactly. Had information. Exactly. Um, the other thing is asking for lifestyle factors that you can do mm -hmm. to help facilitate the change that you want to see. Yes. Now, if the doctor says nothing, then that's questionable, right? But <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, they will give you that lifestyle factors and things that you can change to mm -hmm. help with whatever your goals are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, I think part of it too, and we talked about this before we came on of education is not the only thing they want you. You want to know one, if the person truly understands your goals and what you're trying to get back to and how are you going to make that possible? And then in that network of my big goal of doing this, feeling healthier, um, calming down my gut issues, uh, just feeling good overall, my big goal of that, that's why we're doing X, Y, and Z. So it mm -hmm. always plays back. We talked about this on an earlier episode of know your why, all of that. If you know your why of just honestly wanting to feel better, then when your, your healthcare professional comes in and starts explaining things, you know, hey, listen, I have all these questions because I want to get back to feeling like I did when I was 20. And they're going to explain like, well, we need to do X because this is inflamed, this, 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 that will lead us to our next step. And they can lay out the plan for you because they also have your goal in mind. Now, that being said, you want to find a healthcare professional that can actually wants to listen to that aspect mm -hmm. of it and not just, oh, well, this is what I say, go on with your day. <laughs> right. You know, right. exactly. Yeah. You, you want that. You want them to make sure that you want to make sure they're on the same page as you in the sense of your goals. Mm -hmm. And it's, and in my opinion of it is you have to be realistic as a healthcare provider. Like if someone comes in and tells me, Hey, I got to meet in three weeks and I have all this pain. You got to be brutally honest with them. Be like, do you want a PR in that meet? Or you just want to step on the platform? And mm -hmm. they're like, I just want to step out there to show that I can stick with it. I was like, okay, we can work towards that, but I don't think you're going to PR because you're going to be recovering from this. And it may, it may just be a fancy like SBD day or just a fancy lifting day with, you know, the platform and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And if they're okay with that, that's great. But if their ultimate goal is to compete and like actually PR, win some money or do whatever, then you have to be honest and be like, well, for your goal, I think this is the path we need to take as opposed to, you know, this is what I say, you need to do this and that's it. Right, exactly. And highlighting to them, like if, even if we can't do it in this timeline, like, okay, I understand this is important to you. Mm -hmm. Let's make it realistic and let's make yeah. it happen. But yeah. like you said, we need to be realistic about it. Yes. And mm -hmm. you have no choice. You have to be realistic. You need a, you need a professional that's right. going to be realistic with you. Cause if they're just going to lie to you, you're going to get frustrated towards the end anyway and be like, wait, you yeah. told me this and I didn't get that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we deal with it a lot. Yeah. Like we, me and you both, and I know you have a very extensive questionnaire to fill out as well with goals. I, don't have an extensive questionnaire, but my subjective when I'm talking to somebody on the phone is very intense as well. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like my initial, like, 
What do you want to do? What's going on? What are we trying to get back to? What's your ultimate goal? How long is it? All these things. There's a million questions. And it's I you ask the question, and you just sit back. So we learned in school, though, that's active listening. We talked about that mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. <laughs> but you want to make sure that your healthcare professional is actively listening and not just letting you spurt out words and they're just waiting for you to stop to answer their next question mm -hmm. or ask their next question, which happens a lot of times because of time or whatever it may be. You're like, oh, it's like, all right, they finally done. So this is the next question. And it's like completely random. Right. And it's off the, it makes no sense, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. And it's not, yeah, either, even mirroring what you said. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, a, yeah, no, I agree. And I think a, it's go ahead. important. Well, you know, I think that one of the challenges is um, a lot of times, for example, if you were treating someone's injury, mm -hmm. the session's going to be a great help, but they also have to do work outside of that session to yes. help heal. Yeah. And I think that that's a major barrier within the healthcare system is the fact that like, you know, you see someone once, it's like the personal trainer that sees someone once a week or mm -hmm. once a month, yeah. you know, that wants to lose weight. Okay. Well, what are you doing? You yeah. know, all of that other time that matters. And that's where, again, like there needs to be some sort of plan put into action, yeah. you know, actionable steps to take. Mm -hmm. I even have this conversation, you know, sometimes uh, if I, or even with like therapy, right? If you're not yeah. getting actionable steps from that, mm -hmm. it's going to be really hard to like move through things. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's always about the action at the end. Yeah. That's yeah. really going to help. Yeah. You, you want to have the action at the end of what is the plan? So what we're saying here is in this, all this long conversation of being heard is, and being understood, we want you to know that there are professionals out there that are going to listen to you and help develop a plan to get you to your end goal and not just give you this pill because that's what they're being forced to give you or that's just what mm -hmm. they think is the right thing or that's they've seen 150 patients with this so they're just going to give you that pill you know like right. we want you to understand that you should find somebody who one you jive with i love using the word jive because you got to jive you get you got to get along mm -hmm. with them you know, like if you don't feel comfortable going to the person, they have, maybe you don't like their bedside manner, whatever it is, that's fine. It's not a big deal. You don't have to go to the same right. doctor your parents went to just because your parents went to them and they're like, well, they've been great to me for years. Well, so what? <laughs> you know, like maybe you want to try something, yeah. you know? Find someone else in that insurance plan and yeah. see if it, it's, a, if it's a better fit. I would mm -hmm. even say like to um, give them a chance also yes. like make of sure course. you do bring in the facts and you um try to talk to them before just switching because i just from my personal experience mm -hmm. i can't say this for everyone but um after a few tries she did become more receptive to it and she yeah. did end up being helpful but um it took a few tries first and yeah. the reason that i didn't switch right away was because it's really freaking hard to find gynecologists that can take you yeah with any time within the next six months yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you know yeah. i think that um, if you're having trouble finding another physician, maybe any plan or you're limited on resources, um, try some of the tools that we talked about in this podcast today and see if they help or like change the way that your um, visit goes. Yeah. It's like, see how, uh, see how you can, yes, like Amanda said, be patient too. Like give it, give it a couple mm -hmm. tries. Like if, you know, one time, maybe like I said, in the beginning of this episode, maybe it was a, it's a rough day. Maybe they're having a rough day because we are all humans at the end of the day too. Yes, you should leave everything at the door and stuff, but like it's very hard to leave some stuff at the door. It can seep in. Or maybe they just got through with a patient screaming at them loud at anything because who knows why. And then they're coming into right. your thing and they didn't get a chance to decompress. Well, that's that, that happens. So don't always just like shut down right away and be like, no, this person's terrible for me. Now, three times you visited them and like right. my experience of going to the same guy three times before he was like, I was like, I need to go see somebody else. Cause this is not okay. Went to see another dermatologist and it was great. And I was fine, you know? So like you give it a try and see if you drive together. And if it's great, the main thing is though, you're going to get a feeling of trust. Right. In and if you have that feeling more power to you, and then if they're with you, 
on your plan. They understand what you're trying to do, where you want to be, what you're trying to accomplish and give you resources. And let's say it is something to lose weight and you go to, or the car, you went to the cardiologist and they were like, oh, okay, listen, you got to lower your blood pressure, but they don't give you any way of getting there. Maybe because that's not their scope. Maybe they don't really know enough about dieting and whatever it is to get you to lower your blood pressure. But if they give you the resource, hey, go see this nutritionist, please. They will help you get to the next point because we need you to do laying out the plan again. We need you to lose 10 pounds. So then your blood pressure comes down. You're going to see this nutritionist. So once again, that plan and the goal of you being healthier is still there. And they're explaining why they're having you see somebody else, why you're taking this medication for two weeks, we'll say, just to see how you respond till everything else. You see the nutritionist get all that done. Then it's like, oh, now I understand why I'm doing this as opposed to like, mm -hmm. what am I? And I've had that before. I was like, do you, people come in, like, I don't even know why I'm taking half this stuff. I'm like, okay, well, you got to talk to, you got to talk to your primary care and your cardiologist and neurologist about all this stuff, because I can't tell you why. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I know right. of why, but like, I can't prescribe medication. So I'm like, well, take it up with them. Like, make sure they fully understand how you're feeling. And if it's harming you and you don't feel good on it, say so. There's always other options, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that like, you know, it's okay to build a team as well. Yes. In fact, it's encouraged. A hundred percent build a team. It's encouraged. Yeah. You, you need to like, Hey, this guy sent me here. This person, this girl sent me here. You know what I mean? Like you mm -hmm. want that, that team effort is almost imperative. It is because everyone has their own scope and they need to stay, they stay within their scope. And then you build that team of people. Like how many people are, do I send you? And I'm like, listen, manage your girl, you know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> they'll help you out with your diet, um, getting you like on the path you want to and all that stuff because of that. Cause I'm like, I, I know the basis of nutrition. I don't know right. how to take people. I don't know how to help with their hormones. I don't know how to help with all this stuff. I'm okay. learning a lot from you and talking to you more, but doesn't mean it's my scope. And I'm like, okay, well, here you go. Right. <laughs> Just like if someone came to me with hip pain or shoulder pain, I would not be able to help with that. You know, maybe yeah. I could give some pointers, but it would not yeah, yeah. be to the extent that a physical therapist like you could. Yeah. And we always want what's best for the client or the patient. So yes. It's important. Yeah. Exactly. That's the main thing. We want we want what's best for as professionals, we want what's best for you. And what we're really saying on summing up this whole thing is we have to make sure that one, our anyone we're work, working with, like I said, whether it's a builder <laughs> to do a bathroom with you or a healthcare professional, make sure they also see your end goal with you whatever that may be. It doesn't have to be this, your end goal and my end goal are going to be completely different, but they see that with you. And if they don't try to explain to them why it's so important to you. And then if they don't, again, then maybe you guys aren't a good fit and you don't jive together. And then you try somebody else, but you got to give it, you got to give them some time to come around and really understand that there has to be an end goal that you're trying to get back to. And sometimes it's literally just being healthier, but the plan should be in front of you of how you're going to be mm -hmm. healthier. Not just take this right. and I'll see you in four weeks. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Was... Yeah. They should be empowering you, especially to learn more about yourself and your body yeah. and how it all works. Yes. Um, that is part of, you know, our jobs as healthcare professionals. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. <laughs> we mm -hmm. empower you to take care of yourself because at the end of the day, we are just guiding lights in this whole thing. And even any of your doctors, your anyone in your field is a guiding light. They're just right. going to guide you through what you need to do and give you the tools necessary. You have to take the actions on it. So if you really trust them and you buy into what they're saying and they believe that they have your best interests at heart, stick with them and continue to take the actions on it. And next thing you know, you'll reach your goal. Mm -hmm. You know, there you go. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> exactly. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of the performance play podcast. Um, please, if you are listening on Spotify or Apple, rate us, write a review, let us know what you think. Um, even on YouTube, give us a like, share, tell all your friends. And until next time, Amanda, always a pleasure. Thanks, Nick.